A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. doing Integra today. Good morning fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. And to celebrate the end of March, we got to do an Integral. It's one that confused me a tiny little bit back in the days. This was one that I had to deal with when doing differential equations. And it's actually fitting to have it in a differential equation because it gives you kind of an idea of what kind of casework you need to do in some cases when dealing with differential equations, especially when you have cut up domains. More on that later, at least a tiny little word. So yeah, tension to the third power. Try it out for yourself and tell me which answer you come up with. <laughs> That's important. So, the first thing I did when dealing with this integral was I was splitting it up. Maybe um, integration by parts could be helpful here. So um, that's the same as saying this is the integral of uh, tangent times tangent squared. I'm gonna leave the x out for now. This really doesn't matter. Um, tangent times tangent squared. And do you know what the cool thing about tangent squared is? It's basically Papa Pythagoras' fundamental theorem of trigonometry, just rewritten a tiny little bit. If we take a look at the difference of the secant squared, which is 1 over the cosine, but squared, minus the tangent squared, it's going to give us 1. It's the equivalent to cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1, just forming it around a tiny little bit. So if you were to solve this whole thing, for example, for secant, because the secant squared kind of has something to do with the differential of the tension. We are going to talk about this in a minute. We are going to end up with the integral of the tangent, which is the single thing here, times, and if we bring tangent squared to the other side and then subtract one, once again, we are going to get the secant squared minus one, all of that integrate with respect to x. And now the cool thing about that is we can multiply everything out using the distributive property and the real numbers and then we can make use of the linearity of the integral to break this up into the difference of two integrals. Namely, that's going to be the integral of tangent times secant squared dx and then minus the integral of, well, just tangent integrate with respect to x. This integral right here is really easy to do. We are going to do a little speed run of the integral of tangent on the side. So that's the same as the integral of the sun over the cosine dx. But what we can do is since sun is the differential of the cosine in some kind of way, we can introduce a substitution. So let t be equal to the cosine of x. And if we were to differentiate this implicitly, we are going to get that the differential of t is equal to just negative the sun and then with the dx as the differential, if we were to plug this in, sine dx is what we got here. We are going to put the negative sine, so negative dt at the top. We are going to get the integral of negative dt divided by t. But if we were to integrate t, uh, 1 over t with respect to t, it's just going to be the natural log. So this is going to give us negative the natural log of t, which is the same as saying this is the negative natural log of the cosine x. Okay, so that was a little speed run. If we were to plug this into here, negative and negative becomes positive. So this whole schmarrn, schmarrn in German, okay, um, if you don't know what it is, um, I seriously don't think there's a real English word for that. So, I don't know, probably bullshit or something. It's going to turn into plus the natural log of the cosine x. Plus c, but we are not done yet because we still have this integral. Now, I mentioned before that the uh, differential of the tension has something to do with the secant squared in some kind of way. So why not introduce a u substitution here? So we are going to say um, let t be equal to the tangent of x. 
Now, if we were to differentiate both sides explicitly, we are uh, implicitly, we are going to get that the differential dt is nothing other than, well, the differential in x of, um, well, the sine divided by the cosine and then the differential in x here. So if we were to differentiate this, what we are going to get is just the regular um, product and chain rule. So we are going to differentiate the sine with respect to x at first, giving us the cosine divided by the cosine. Then this right here, we are going to differentiate now 1 over the cosine. That's the same as cosine to negative 1 power. So what we are going to do is we are going to decrease the exponent by 1, giving us a negative here, negative 1, bring it to the front, and we are going to get 1 over the cosine squared. Um, also, we preserve our sign that we got right here, and if we take the inner derivative of the cosine um, to negative 1, it's just the derivative of the cosine, which is going to give us negative the sign. So negative and negative becomes positive. We're going to get a sine squared here. Doesn't look very good, dx, by the way, um, but it gets a tiny little bit better if if we expand this fraction cosine divided by the cosine by cosine over cosine, giving us the same denominator here. So this is going to be the cosine squared. Same denominator on both. We can put this together, cosine squared, and plus sin squared up here, dx. But cosine squared plus sin squared is the same as 1. So what we are going to be left with overall is 1 divided by the cosine squared, but 1 divided by the cosine is the secant, so overall this is going to give us as the differential dt just the secant squared dx. And like magic, this integral right here falls apart, giving us overall an answer of, well, we are going to get um, here tension was nothing other than t. Secant squared dx is just our differential dt plus the other stuff that we got right here. Integrating t with respect to t is fairly simple. Um, I would even say it's pretty trivial to integrate. This is just um, one half um, t squared plus blah, blah, blah. Um, and t we know is nothing other than tension. So this is one half times the tension squared of x plus the logarithm with respect to cosine x plus some arbitrary constant c. And now we could call this whole thing quits. This right here is a valid antiderivative. You can deal with this. Hmm. But this is just one way of substituting in here. What we could also do instead of substituting the tension inside of this integral is we could substitute the uh, secants, for example. So what would happen if we set t instead of tangent of x to be equal to secant. Okay, let us do this real quick. So um, for a second um, way to integrate this integral, we are going to set t to be equal to the secant. Um, and this is nothing other than 1 divided by the cosine. If we were to implicitly differentiate this, we are going to get dt as the differential here. And then we are going to get the derivative of 1 over cosine. We have integrated this just a second ago. This was just the second part of the quotient rule, you could say just a chain rule. So we are going to decrease the, the exponent by 1, giving us a negative here and 1 divided by the cosine, but squared. And the inner derivative is the sine x. Okay, dx. Hmm, doesn't look very satisfying, does it? I mean, we could break this up into um, negative and Oh yeah, and negative and negative becomes positive. I'm terribly sorry, because um, the negative because of the exponent and then the cosine differentiate is negative sine. So this becomes positive. Um, what we could do, we could break this up a bit into the sine divided by the cosine times one over the cosine. And those are two that we were dealing with just a second ago. Those are familiar to us. Namely, sine divided by the cosine is the tangent. So the differential dt is equal to the tangent of x times one over cosine. This is the secant. And that is fairly good, I would say, because we are substituting the secant as a variable. And what we are still going to be left in the integra integral, in the integral, is going to be, if we take a secant away, tangent times the secant, dx, which is our new differential. So on the other hand, what we could say is that this integral, so this right here is the first one, and if we substitute it in a second way, is gonna be equal to the integral of, once again, t dt plus the other stuff. But we know what t integrated with respect to t is, that's one half t squared, but this time our 
T is seconds? Yeah, that is weird, I would say. I mean, this is kind of special. I would um, just put in, into the room. You can think of that what you will. But um, this time we're we are going to get one half times the second squared of x plus um, the logarithm of cosine of x and then plus a constant c. I mean, I, I mean, those are obviously um, not equal since the tension is totally different to the secant. Those are two different functions. So what can we do about that? Um, I mean, this is weird. This part right here is completely equal. This is nice. But here we are going to get different answers. Well, this is where our constants come in. Let us call those C1 and C2 because, you know, an integral can only have one antiderivative. It's uniquely determined. Kind of. It's kind of uniquely determined. Because it's only up to a constant. If we were to differentiate any kind of antiderivative of an integral, then a constant really doesn't matter because the differential of a constant is just zero. So no matter what the constant right here is, it's going to vanish. And as soon as this part right here, no matter which antiderivative, is equal to the original integral, uh, in integrant in and of itself, it's going to be the right antiderivative. And it indeed is. If you were to take a look at the graph, you are going to notice that they are only a certain y value apart from each other. They are only separated in a, a a y value, it's, it's just this thing right here. They are separated by a constant and we can actually calculate this constant. This is fairly easy. Since those two antiderivatives must be equal because, well, it's, they, they are both the antiderivative of tangent to the third power. It's a transitive property. If one and two are equal to the first thing, then one must be equal to two. If we were to set those equal, then obviously our log of cosine x are just going to float out of the window. They are going to die somewhere in the corner at least. So meaning what's going to be equal is still the one half tangent squared plus c1 being equal to one half the secant squared plus c2. Now what we can do is, if we take a look at this identity once again, we could bring one half the tangent squared to the other side and the other stuff to the even other, other side, the, the side that is other to the other side. So the other side, this is like the plural of other. I, I think, I'm not an English expert, but it does make sense. I, I think, no, it, it really doesn't. So we are going to get one half the secant squared minus one half the tangent squared being equal to, we brought this to the other side, so this is C1 minus C2. We can factor out the one half, it's a common factor, and secant squared minus tangent squared is gonna be equal to one. So meaning overall we get the identity that the difference of C1 and C2 is equal to one half or if you want to plug one constant into the other we are going to get conclusively that C1 is equal to one half plus C2. So if you were to just raise our C2 by an additional one half in the y direction we are going to be at our other function. This is just what it means. So if you want to land at our, at our um, function number two, our, um, our um, integral number two, our primitive, we are just going to add a factor of one half to this whole thing, just a sum, and then we are going to be here. And this is just what that means. And this is fairly important in differential equations actually, because most of the time in many, in many problems in differential e equations, if you have split up domains, you need to take care of those constants. They are going to make a huge difference. Sure, you can get an antiderivative, but this antiderivative that you get must not be the one that you should deal with actually, because it could be separated by a constant which lies overall in the other domain, the other part of the domain. And this is where you need to be really careful, especially on total differential equations, if I'm not mistaken. It has been a while, but it's important there. I, if you take a look into my differential equation playlist, I have a lot of videos there, and at some point, 
um, Angel Mendes Riviera um, pointed this stuff out too when we were dealing with um, those constants when getting those at the end of differential equation. It's a fairly interesting thing and if you want to know more about this just take a look into any differential equation um, course book that's a few years back they really dealt with the stuff in there. Um, and yeah maybe this was enlightening to you and maybe this was kind of a bit of mind blow to you because it was the first time around to get two different quote unquote different antiderivatives for the same integra. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today and if you are interested in more calculus, integrals, mind blowing mathematics, physics and so on then the contents of today's sponsor brilliant might be the perfect fit for you. Now what I found cool about this problem is if you were to plug this into Desmos you are going to clearly see how far apart those two constants are from each other. You can clearly see the difference in those and how much you need to shift the one antiderivative to reach your second one. It's fairly clear if you take a look at the graph and it's also pretty clear once you solve the simple equation right here. But most people are actually more familiar with the graphical approach to especially calculus problems. If they encounter stuff like this the first time around they want to ha have something in their hands they want to see something have it visually before their eyes to actually understand the problem at hand and this is where Preant is really good at. Preant is your source for some of the best online learning content out there on the internet. I'm a frequent user over there and I visit it nearly every week to brush up on all topics and some that I am not yet familiar with. They were a huge help back in the days when I was looking at theoretical mechanics for example or maybe even at Markov change in, uh, chains in probability theory. Everything that you can think of in the STEM field, be it the rocket equation in physics or maybe some kind of quantum mechanical behavior that you want to understand, they got it covered over on their website and in a really, really intuitive fashion as mentioned before. Their courses start off fairly simple with a few definitions here and there making you understand the core concepts a bit but they are going to get gradually harder. But it's not that you don't understand the things anymore, they are getting harder just like in class. But with those visuals they really make it easy for you to get a grasp, to get a really good understanding of what you want to learn and how you can apply it to other fields in mathematics, physics etc. depending on what you are learning at the moment. And the graphics are just absolutely mind boggling and amazing. If you want to learn something about the graphs for example that we got here or maybe a parabola or whatnot, maybe also Gabriel's horn with the painter's paradox. You can play around with the graphs, you can take the horn just a, just a logarithmic function and then you can suddenly rotate it in three dimensions and get Gabriel's horn out. This is one great animation and when it comes to derivatives you can play around with the tension until you see oh we got an extremum once you reach a derivative of zero. Obviously Obviously we don't have a slope anymore, it does make perfect sense. And this is where they really really shine and where I have to say if you are a visual learner they are definitely something for you and you should just try it out. If you don't trust me on that try it out for yourself, 30 day free trial by using my link down there at the top of the description brain.org slash maps. But if you think that this is really something for you, if you could benefit from Brilliant on a long term basis then you really need to make clicky clicky on that linky linky to get 20% of an annual premium subscription. It's a fantastic deal, so much content over there and they are adding so much on a regular basis, brushing up on the visuals and everything each and every month. They are really putting their everything into this website to make learning for you as easy and intuitive as possible. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way and if you enjoyed this video then subscribe to the channel and also subscribe to Flammy's Wood, my woodworking channel and uh, I still need to uh, install the other lighting. Um, I have it lying around here but I haven't gotten around installing it. It's a nice LED panel and it's gone I have cold white light I'm shining from it so it's gonna be a pretty good lighting experience. I'm also gonna do some LED backlight stuff here one after another. I have so many things to do at the moment on my agenda so it's still gonna take a while but I hope the videos are still bearable to watch in this um, dark mode mathematics environment and I thank you guys for watching and up until the next video I wish you guys a flamble day. Please stay safe. Ciao!